Hey everyone, Aaron Davis here from FCP Euro, and today I'm going to show you how to replace your front brakes on your Audi B8 S4. So behind me I have a 2013 Audi S4. The brake pad light actually came on, so now it's time to replace them. I would start looking at your brakes around like the 30,000 mile mark, but it also depends on how hard you drive the vehicle as well. This front brake kit includes two Zimmerman Z-coated rotors and also TRW ceramic brake pads. These ceramic brake pads are less dust compared to semi-metallic and a lot quieter, so it'll keep your wheels clean. This brake kit is the same for all B8 chassis vehicles with a single piston caliper. However, if you do have the Brembo caliper system, the brake pads are a little different to put in. We're gonna be showing how to install your front brakes on the driver's side because that also includes the brake pad sensor, but don't worry, it's the same process on the passenger side without the brake pad sensor. So now let's take a look at the tools you will need to replace your front brakes. The tools you're gonna to need to perform a front brake job on a 2013 Audi S4 are a ball peen hammer, half inch breaker bar, torque wrenches, flathead screwdriver, 90 degree hook pick, a three ace ratchet, 17 millimeter socket, 21 millimeter socket, a 13 millimeter socket, and a T30. And also for us, I use power tools. You do not need power tools to perform this job, and there are no special tools to perform a front brake job. So let's get started. So the first step is grab your 17 millimeter with an impact or a breaker bar, and you're gonna take the front wheel off. So the second step, you're gonna need a screwdriver or a pry bar. You're gonna to wanna to open up the brake pad so you can take the caliper off. So I like to just jam the screwdriver in here or a breaker bar, work them back and forth. We left the vehicle on to give us uh, better access to turn the actual wheel because this does have an electronic rack which locks up when the car is off. Now that the piston is pushed in, we're gonna take the anti-rattle clip off. You just use a Flathead right here, put your hand here because it, it will spring out and that will hurt if it hits you. Now I'm just gonna press it one more time, make sure this piston is fully closed. Now the next step is to disconnect the brake pad wear sensor. So you're gonna find it with a clip right here, right off of the knuckle. You use a 90 degree right here, you pry this a little bit. Then you twist this 90 degrees and then this one's a little corroded so it's kind of stuck in here so wiggle it to get that dirt out okay so now I'm gonna unplug it just a push tab and then see the rubber cap where your brake bleeder valve is you're gonna want to open it so then now the sensors free and then it root loops into the caliper and then you can rip it right off and as you can see it was time to replace them the brake pad ripped through the wear sensors what indicated the light on the dashboard now i'm going to use a 13 millimeter to take these two bolts off will actually hold the caliper in place now the bolts are out so now the 13 millimeters are out i'm going to i can pull the caliper out freely i'm going to rest it right on top of the dust shield. So now I'm gonna take the brake pads off. The most outer brake pad is actually stuck on with an adhesive and the inner brake pad is actually clipped in with retaining clips. So I'm gonna show you to take how the, the glue went off. You just jam a flathead or a pry bar right here and you can see the adhesive starting to peel off. This is the adhesive I'm talking about it actually sticks to the caliper, it holds it in place. And this is a little set set pin right here to hold it in place so it doesn't move. Now I'm gonna take the, the rear pad off and you just pull out. And these are the retaining clips so it actually goes inside of the piston to hold it in place. Also has a little adhesion. You can see where the piston sits right here. So now I'm gonna use a 21 millimeter to take the caliper carrier off which holds the caliper in place. There's two bolts and they're on there tight. And you can't mess these bolts up either. Uh, they're the exact same length. So it doesn't matter which one goes on top or which one goes on the bottom. There you go. Carrier's off. Next up, we're gonna take this T30 off. This is just a set screw that holds the rotor in place. So 
So now we're going to want to move the brake disc, but uh, this is actually really on there. So I just take a lug, put them in finger tight. And you're going to want to use a ball peen hammer. Do not use a regular wood hammer because that hurts your wrists. And then you just want to hit it right here since we're not using the brake disc, we're replacing them. And a note, if you're just doing a pad slap, which I do not recommend, do not do this to your rotor. And I recommend to use a wire brush just to clean the hub, just get the, all the rust and dirt off. You wanna make sure the rotor is sitting properly. Okay, so now that that is mostly cleaned off, use the same wire brush. And you're gonna wanna clean these little rods because this is actually where your pad sits on and where you're gonna lubricate the pads so they don't make noise. So you obviously wanna make sure that these are clean. So just take your time. You don't want any squeaky brakes after a brake job. That will drive you nuts. So now you're gonna to wanna to put your new rotor on. Make sure that all your wheel lug holes are lined up. This kit has new set screws, so we're gonna install them. Then these are literally just hand tight, just like that. Now we're gonna install the brake caliper carrier. I like to install these by hand because you tend to have to move these around to get the thread started. Like I said, hold the, ca hold the carrier. You don't want this to fall on you. Now you're gonna to wanna to torque both these bolts to 190 Newton meters. This brake kit does include TRW brake pad paste, but I also wanna highlight local Molly ceramic paste that we do have in stock here at FCP Euro. So now the next step is we're gonna lubricate the pads and slap them in. We're gonna do the inner pad, which clips into the actual piston. Okay. Now we're gonna put the outer side brake pad. Squeeze on just like that, make sure the dowel pin is lined up. If the brake pads do not slide over the rotor, that just means you have to compress the brake pads more so the piston goes in. There we go. So now where those 13s go, you'll see here that there's a rubber boot and it's not going in, so you push in. So it goes over that lip. You do that same thing for the top. Now it's time to install the 13s. I like to lubricate them a little bit because they do go into the seals. Now we're going to tighten them and torque them to 30 Newton meters. Yeah. Now that the brake pads are installed, we're going to install the BOA brake pad wear sensor. The wear sensor goes into the inner brake pad and there's a clip. You just push it in. Now the brake pad wear sensor is installed, we're going to install the wire into the caliper. It's going to wrap around back to the bracket of the knuckle, twist it 90, locks into place, plug it in, take the wire where the brake bleeder screw is, the rubber, close it like this, all set. Now we're going to install the anti-rattle clip. So you put the ears of it kind of on the outside like this. So you push it in, and then push it in. There you go. So now that the front brakes are installed, it's time to install the wheel. Now you're gonna use your 17 millimeter, torque the wheel down to 89 foot pounds. Now you're gonna turn the car on, ignition on, and step on the brake pedals a little bit to embed the brake pads. So now that the front brakes are installed on this 2013 Audi S4, hope you feel comfortable enough to do it in your own driveway. I know that we only showed you how to replace them on the driver's side because that has the brake pad wear sensor. Just remember that the same process is the same on the passenger side, but the passenger side does not have a brake pad wear sensor. I hope you like this video. If you like it, please hit the like button below. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment box below, and I'll see you again.